information study is the research university. Also, the guest professor of our institute, Institute for India Ocean Economies. So, welcome, Professor Swaran Singh. Thank you, uh, Professor Chu Shuiping, uh, also to uh, Professor Chang Chatong, and uh, your team, actually. My compliments uh, for continuing with Shanghai Forum and despite limitations, uh, and I'm delighted to see uh, that many participants are here with us. Now, I'm also honored to be on this panel with Professor Lu Kuangsheng and uh, of course my old friend, Professor Yang Yishuang. And uh, I heard Professor Lu's uh, presentation, I think excellent and very balanced presentation. And I will try to now uh, put the same subject from India's perspective. Now, the topic given to me to speak uh, on is RCEP, a new journey for regional economic cooperation. And I will be looking at it from, of course, Indian perspective, uh, but I will try to look at it from two perspectives. Uh, one as to what is desirable and other what is feasible. So that distinction perhaps is important for us to underline and appreciate. First of all, doubt that the idea of regional economic cooperation, cooperation is very important, is very useful. Very useful. And, several and several regions have over have a period of time tried to use FTAs to build economic integration. And RCEP is uh, obviously one of the largest such experiments. Uh, as we understand, it represents 15 countries minus India, uh, represent about 29% of world GDP. GDP. They, they, they are, are, are about, about 23 billion people. Billion people. So it's a very so it's large, large population and group of nations, group of nations put together are today, are today 66 trillion, trillion dollars of years of period, which makes, which makes about 5 trillion, five trillion dollars bigger, bigger than United, than United States. States. So there is no so there is no doubt that the idea of the regional comprehensive economic cooperation, cooperation is very, is very attractive. And therefore, we see the sentiment, the sentiment which is being expressed, being expressed one after one another. After another. For, example, For example, if you were listening to, listening to Premier Premier Khachiang addressing address recently on 26th October, 26th October, the China ASEAN summit meeting, summit meeting he underlined the need to ratify RCEP as soon as possible. And several ASEAN leaders have reciprocated. That is the model of sentiment. Now, if we look at the reality, now this agreement was signed in November of last year. And we are in the year of 2021, which means one year has passed. Only three countries have ratified it, ratified it so far. China, Singapore, Thailand. What that underlines underline is that it is that only India, India that had, that had I will actually call it, call it variation, variation exceptions. But even, but even the 15 countries that have signed it, there continues to be variation in their perceptions about what they wish to achieve. And in fact, some of them today blame India for having laid, having laid, or sort of having taken them to that golden, golden, path, that golden path and having and not having the not itself. 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 So if you so look at the nuance, the nuance, it's little more complex than how media headlines sometimes make it appear. Now let us look at how is India engaged with, with what, today, what RCEP. today RCEP. 
Half of half the world, of the world, world, is, world is, is in Asia. Asia. And very very with countries with countries that to together become together become RCEP. RCEP. About thirty seven percent of India exports exports and forty four percent of India of India exports are with are with fifteen countries countries. So India's engagement with countries that constitute constitute is very robust very robust. Now let me also underline that R C R C is only one one frame, only one only one channel channel of achieving regional economic integration. Integration. India's India integration with this region this region has many has other mechanisms as well as well. India already has F T L F T L with ASEAN ten nations. With Japan, with Japan, South Korea, South we are we are in another FTA, another FT with Australia. Australia. The interim agreement was agreement for that time to next time month. Next month. So, if India is not India part is not of the CEP, that does that not does India is not India part is not part of the economic integration. And of course, and of course there are bilateral relations which are also which very significant, very significant. Because, because from 1990, India's look east policy has tried to build economic relations with various South East Asian nations. So in reality, India is not part of RCEP as of now, as of now, though both. RCEP countries, the countries, also India, also India, continue to say that doors are not closed, are not closed. and India could potentially, potentially join, join even, even RCEP, RCEP. Provided, provided India's concerns, India's concerns are, met. are met and that the sessions are mutual. What are those what are those issues that have made that have made yeah, yeah. to stay to stay away from away from RCEP? You see, India, you see, right, right from the right right beginning, beginning in 2011, 2011 was integral, integral part of RCEP negotiations. And when the current Prime Minister came to power in 2014. 2014 in his very first interaction in the ASEAN Submission in Myanmar in 2014, November, he not only explained how he wants to shift India's India's to become India's act as policy, but if you look at that speech, Prime Minister Narendra Modi in November of 2014 in Myanmar also said. That he said RC RC as spring board for economic integration prosperity. prosperity. So India's sentiment was robust, was robust to continue negotiation. But obviously, as the negotiation moved, India felt yeah. that some of its concerns were not being integrated into the RCEP. So, if I quoted in the Prime Minister in 2014, now let me go to the Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal, who recently addressed the annual rise and dialogue, mentioned how CEP has become a situation of non reciprocity in FTA. Where mutual concessions are not being made, where non-tariff barriers continue to be a problem, be a problem. Mutual taxes on exports, quotas on exports, continue to be concerns of concerns of India as to why as to why is not is not in position to sign to sign the RCE as the draft the draft today. Let me underline what is the most the most visible fundamental problem that is problem. India has. And you will immediately you will immediately say that India that has, India has a deficit, deficit in favor of other countries, other countries 
of 11 of the 15 RC institutions. So 11 of the 15 RCEP countries have trade deficit deficit their favor when it comes to trade with India. Indeed, let me say 70 to 75 percent deficit in India's world trade is with RCEP countries. Now, why it is that mutual is not something that guides economic integration of India and India and these countries? Now, if no, there is going to be virtually one day, one day, then it really affects the global credit worthiness. But it also understand hampers India's attempt at industrialization. As you understand, India is an economy, economy which is primarily dominated by industrial and services. And India is and trying to make an effort, make an effort to promote competitiveness of Indian manufacturing and industry. Now, the way our state is designed, is designed, it will open, it will open front gates, front gates of imports, of imports which will undermine industrialization. It will also it will also just lead us small industries, industries uncompetitive, uncompetitive and just disappear. disappear. And the problem, and the problem there is not only not that only that our CEP our has put very ambitious targets for bringing down the bringing tariffs. down the tariffs. They want to remove ninety percent of tariffs, percent of tariffs. But also but the problem with the problem there is barriers, tariff barriers, which are not which are not addressed by the draft by the draft. So in that, so in that, until some of until some of these are resolved, are resolved. For example, for example, you have, access, should have access visa access for visa access skilled workforce. If India is willing to accept you know, enormous amount of lowering of tariffs for imports of goods from these RCEP nations, then can India also see? certain amount of visa liberalization for India's skilled workforce, basically how to build mutuality into that relationship, how to make that give and take for balance. Because, because if it becomes one-sided, it, one it will never grow. Never grow. And example, example lies, lies, lies in China today. China today. In 1990s, early 1990s, India China, India trade China trade trade balanced. balanced. It has gradually become gradually virtually one sided trade. Where China yes. increasingly supplies high skill and technology, and technology, and technology intensive technology. commodities to India. Whereas India has imports continue to be largely raw material and low value. Low value. Low value. Now, that kind of one sided trade. Where, where China, for instance, on annual basis exports about 55 to 65 billion dollars, and India exports only 12 to 17 billion dollars, has resulted in trade not growing further. For last 15 years, trade has progressed, continued to be where it is. Where it is. Compare this with India's trade with the trade with the United States. Which is now the largest trade for India. For India. Now that no, trade is clearly far more better. Far more better. So if so you want to see economic to see integration, economic integration, it cannot it cannot if it is not it is mutual. mutual. And I would not I would not rule out that there is a certain, is a certain impact of China India tension that also makes India very conscious conscious. How much how much can India can make yeah. for joining RCEP? For instance, with RCEP, Chinese economy alone alone is one one of the highest times. Then all then the forty of forty is countries put together. So when so when a makes a concession, you can understand under the concession primarily China. China. 
and India and China, China have been discussing this off and on and off and FTA for 20 years, years, but of course it does not move forward. forward. So will, will India join India joining EP, EP will be a bad entry for China, for China to get to free get access to India's markets. So there so, are issues there are, which are also in that sense bilateral between India and China. And I would not I hope that you know that this plays a certain influence. But whether, but whether by not being part of RCEP is becoming is become island as Professor Lu Function just mentioned. I think that I think that is a little far little far fetched idea. That that doesn't at all convince me because because is only one of one systems India's India larger region the region. And of course, Professor Lu himself himself mentioned when India has lived in a far more far more stronger economic relationship relationship with United States and and friends and allies of the allies of United States. So if you look so at the India said in there with your with union, union United States, United States, States you will realize, realize, realize absolutely not an island, island, island when it comes to it comes to the regional integration. India is India very is much integrated, integrated into the larger region. larger region. But I fully but agree, fully agree, agree with the conclusion that India that is India the second the largest, second largest country, if India joins the country, has lost something by not joining, by not joining RCEP. RCEP. But I like but the fact like that he also said that RCEP, that RCEP has RCEP also lost, so lost by not making, making enough Incentives for India to join RCP. RCP. So loss so loss on both, on both sides. Both sides. Now whether no, when the stage, stage both sides both sides can understand and have and have in part of RCP. That will be that will be a good a good prospect prospect which will which will put regional regional economic integration to on to on stronger grounds and much faster and much faster. But till but that happens, 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 we will have to we will wait have and, to see, and see. And I'm happy to notice, notice that, that repeatedly, one after one another, another leaders, leaders, of leaders of RCEP. RCEP. Recently, we had in India ASEAN, ASEAN, ASEAN summit meeting, where again, where this again, this was underlined under ASEAN leaders, ASEAN leaders, and they would like to continue to talk to India. To make sure India finally joins our society. But that may but take some time. And I understand that the fact that we are in pandemic now for last almost uh, two years now may have may have to a while to while review. Review has not has not happened. Where our yeah. countries are willing to accommodate yeah. India's concerns yeah. and, and yeah. enough incentives to send them. Yeah. Join RC, join RC. But doors are not doors closed. are not closed. That is being underlined on both sides. And I and therefore, I, yeah. remain yeah. optimist about the possibilities, the possibilities of India's of economic integration with the region, with the region. also including India's engagement, engagement and participation. I will be now closing now up your remarks. I look forward if there are any questions. I'll be happy to try to answer those. Thank you very much. And back to Professor Chu Shui Ping.